All right, before I nap more of that Knife River stuff, I'm going to nap this piece here. I've been looking at it all week. And I'm curious to see what I can get out of it. It's a heat treat from Georgia. Some type of Georgia Jasper, right? Okay. Let's see. Well, I probably don't need a glove for this one. Yeah, I'm starting out with a flake. Kind of a wonky flake, a little bit curved. It's got some translucent areas in it, so it's an interesting jasper. I might not be able to preserve any of the clear spots. Yeah, I'm going to have to lose some of this mass here. It might break off. I have to decide where I'm going to put the arrowhead. I might have to lose this whole area right there. Unless I make it really long. I don't, know, I don't know if that's straight enough there. It might be, but I gotta lose that whole piece on this side. I gotta lose all of that. All right, well, let's just see. I'm gonna see if I can thin this down and take the curve out a little bit. I probably won't be able to preserve the very tip. All right. Do I always analyze it like that in the beginning? No. Oh, there it goes. Was there a defect? There was something weird in there. And I, might have, I think there was an existing crack. Yeah, it opened up in that weird spot right there, probably. Well, that solves that problem. Okay. Let's see, do I save these? Sometimes I save these little pieces, so... Let's just save that one little piece. Okay, now what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes it much easier now. I'll just pick around the edges and see what I got. Attack the worst first. The worst spots on this first. See what I have left. I'll nap this and then I'll get back to the Knife River stuff. If you're wondering where to get this type of Jasper, I got this from Jeff Head. Hey, Jeff, H-E-A-D, head. Yeah, just the way it sounds. I put a link to his Facebook page or his Instagram. I think it's Facebook page in the comment section. I've been putting links to stuff in the comment section. So if you, if you never look at the comment section, you're missing out. Yep. Now you got a reason to look at the comment section. I put links, links to nappins or information on nappins, links to where to get flint napping tools, links to where you can buy the the book that I call the Oracle. Let's see, where is it? The Arrowhead book. This is the 13th edition. You should be able to get the 15th edition for 35 bucks at Barnes & Noble. But look in the comment section of my latest videos and you can get a direct link and it'll take you right to it. And you can order it from that link right there because it's right on the Barnes & Noble site. You can also get it from flintnappingtraditions.com. But that one's a 12th edition. But it'll, you'll save about 10 bucks or no, you'll save some money. 
Maybe not 10 bucks, but you'll save some money if you buy the 12th edition. They're pretty similar. I mean, the book has been pretty thick for years. Yeah. It's funny because uh, I've been putting links to all this stuff in the comment section. And I still get questions. So that I know that people don't read the comment section. They think it's probably sur superfluous. Yeah. Which means it's just extra mumbo jumbo or whatever. Not interesting. But I can put a thousand times more information, more bits of information in the comment section than I can in the description box of the video oh yeah the description box of the video holds barely any information by comparison to the comment section yep now we might not let my viewers post links to things but i can post links to things yeah go ahead and uh, try to post a link to something in your comment i'm curious to see if if youtube takes it down if they are taking them down it's because they're trying to prevent spamming if you let me know that you have a special tool or some nice rock for sale just let me know and i'll put your information in the comment section for you so youtube won't take it down Alrighty, why do i do that because i get questions i want to answer the questions where do you get the rocks where do you get the tools where do you get the books where do you get all this stuff so I put links and the more links in there the better yeah now if you if you request me to put something that's not flint napping related in the comment section I'm gonna say uh, I don't think so If it's related to one of my videos, I'll put it in that comment section. Like if it's related to one of my other videos that's off topic, like the smoking the mullen. If you are if you are an expert in these these smokables and you've got a little book or something or a website or a YouTube channel that has more info on it. Yeah, I'll put a link to it in the comment section of that video. Yeah. We just got to keep everything... Everything on the same sheet of music. So that it, you know, makes sense to have these things in there. In the comment section. Okay. So is this good stuff? I think it is. Now, is it going to make a nice arrowhead? That's another story. If I don't mess it up. I subconsciously paused right there. Because it's, it's starting to get thin. Now, this stuff is not like the Knife River. Knife River does not like that inward force. This stuff does like it. I can drive flakes with a lot of inward force on this. Whereas on the Knife River, it didn't like it unless it had a very stout striking area and it, 
an extreme amount of force. So much force that you risk breaking it with every strike. And it just giggles at you, knowing that you're going to mess up eventually with all the force that's required. Yeah. Eventually you're going to mess up and the rock's going to laugh at you. Yeah. With the that kind of rock, like the Knife River. This one will only laugh at you if you are too cocky and get it too thin. It likes everything else. You don't need to attack this with all that much force. But it will laugh at you if, because it uh, tends to break in half. Because it's a heat treat. Did I mention it was a heat treat? No. Probably 400 degrees heat treat. Or 375 or something like that. Not much over 400, although you can heat this up pretty hot. And no, you don't nap it while it's hot. You let it cool down first, okay? Yeah. Some people are that new that they don't know what I'm talking about. Are you napping a rock that feels hot right now? No, I'm not. This is not heat. This is this is not hot. This is room temperature. Yeah. I remember back in the day when I first started explaining heat treat. I guess not very many nappers were doing it because people were asking me these weird questions. What do you mean heat treat? Are you hitting the rock while it's hot? What are you doing? No. You heat it up, then let it cool down, and you do it slowly. It's more important to let it cool down slowly than to heat it up slowly. Although both are important, you can heat rock up pretty fast and nothing will happen. But cooling it down too fast for some reason is more damaging yeah and you can heat the rock up and down up and down and do that cycle over and over again many times without harming the rock I mean it might get too fragile if you use too much heat but it's not due to the number of times you use heat it, it depends on the temperature you can raise and lower the temperature on on the rock as long as you do it slowly uh, many many times you can do it many times and it won't harm the rock does it make it better than just heating it once that's something i don't know it might you know if you Heat it once, let it cool down, and heat it again, let it cool down. Same temperature, same conditions, same time period, everything same, 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 same. It might not better if you do it twice. Double heat. I haven't really experimented that much with that aspect. The reason why I don't do too much heat treat analysis is because it takes me all week to do any kind of analysis or any kind of um, video on heat treats because I have to do multiple heat treats with multiple pieces that are not big batches it's just like a small batch of this small batch of that sometimes I'll, I have to spend three days heating a single piece of rock that's it and I might have like 50 pieces of rock to do that with to come up with good data uh, I'm not joking it's easy to come up with 50 five zero flakes and you got to test each one individually before and after heat treat on video I had a bunch of this stuff lined up and all my notes out and I looked at all my notes okay heat this one at this this temperature compare before and after make sure I have three raw flakes three heat treat flakes Three raw flakes that are all consistent 
and three that are going to go in the heat treat that match the first three that are raw exactly in properties of napping so that when I test it heated I can have a, a good comparison to the non-heated okay and do at least three pieces of raw and three pieces of heat treat at different temperatures of heat treat that way I can show you the differences in what the heat treat does compared to the raw of you know a, just parallel comparisons just that one test with six flakes takes me an entire week to prepare and I'll get maybe 500 views on it because it's really not that interesting I mean it is to certain nerds that want to know but the results are, are going to be this in, in when I've over the years when I when I look back at what heat treat does those three that are heat may or may not change much at all from the original raw stuff right sometimes the uh, the first two heatings don't change much at all but the last one at a higher heat changes it a lot and it could be luck and it, or it could be you know just they that that rock responds to that particular temperature really well why could it be luck because sometimes within rocks there's areas that are different they may not seem different in consistency when you're napping really quick and try to figure out if it's the same but for some reason some of that rock will heat much better than the than its brother flakes but it won't do that again later the moral of the story is even if I got six flakes and I do this test perfectly the next six flakes of the same batch from the same nodule may not behave the same way that's the moral of the story so I got to do another batch to see does this first six batch this is the first batch of six compare with the next batch of six from the same nodule in my experience there there can be variations in there do you want to know the variations that's what you want to know you want to know the variations well the what what you'll get from that knowledge is that your stuff will vary because you'll do the same test and you'll go yeah some of this stuff kind of this one broke up and the other ones are fine I got five or I got three over here that on the first heat treat that reacted really well and then I tried it again and then two of the two of these three heated broke up and I did the same thing and that sort of thing or this first batch heated well but I took us another batch of six and I compared it with the three flakes and three flakes and it didn't do anything this, this the, the heat treat at the same temperature didn't nap any better you'll find variation in your experiments that's why I'm telling I've been telling guys you will need to experiment with your rock and just pick it up and start napping it if it's good put it aside if it's not good try heating it again but do it in batches big batches you don't have time to be messing around with little little batches and I don't have time to be messing around with little batches if it naps it naps I've just learned not to pay attention to the, the type the thickness of it the uh, color of it the way it changes color the way it changes it consists I just don't pay attention to that anymore and I just go does it nap or not yes over here no maybe need to see it again so I'll put it back in the heat and I, I nap a bunch of them from this heat tree batch some of them that well okay stick them in the good stuff and then try reheating the rest some of the stuff doesn't matter how much you heat it doesn't do anything and it should but it doesn't you'll go you'll ask me in an email you know I heated this is his chert but it doesn't do anything yeah sometimes nature has already heat treated it yeah like hornstone it looks like chert acts like chert smells like chert naps like chert but it's already heated by nature you try to heat treat it it's not going to change it although it is a chert okay so just because it quacks like a duck walks like a duck and poops like a duck it's not a duck <laughs> it could be a, a robotic duck or a mechanical duck or just you know an animation some sort of CGI
Just because the rock looks like it should nap, I mean, should heat treat, it acts like it should heat treat, and comes from a, a part of the country that has lots of heat treatable rocks, doesn't mean it can heat treat. And if it does heat treat, it doesn't mean it will heat treat well, because maybe some of the, even though some of the stuff before it heat treated okay, doesn't ma doesn't mean that yours is going to heat treat okay. Moral of the story, again, it's all variable. That's why I just gave up on it. I gave up on doing individual experiments on video, except for that one that I, I did on some eBay stuff. I did a series on eBay rock from Romolo, the seller on eBay, and I heat treated this stuff and I did several videos in a series and uh, what was what what became of that? What was the moral of the story after I did that video series? What kind of feedback did I get from people? And did it help anybody? You want, you know what I got? Ninety percent of what I got was you got stuff better than I did. <laughs> Ninety percent of the comments said. When I got feedback, said I got better stuff than everybody else. You got better stuff. I got crud. My own didn't heat. Yours heated. Mine didn't. It's not working. I didn't even get the colors you got. I got different colors. Mine was totally different. My experience was not like yours. That was 90% of the comments that I got. And I got email comments too, not just the ones in the comment section. And some people would say, I can't heat it because it got some kind of malfunction, I suppose, with my roaster because it doesn't work. Yeah, so it just was a bunch of problems. Problems. I opened a can of worms. I opened a can of worms by thinking, by not thinking, but by uh, getting the ball rolling in a direction that I didn't want to get it rolling in. Yeah, because I'm not going to spend all my time testing heat treats so that people can see what the variations are. You know, some people will go out and buy rocks specifically so they can heat treat it the way I did. And they, they'll get all ticked off that they wasted money because their heat treat didn't work out the same way. It's not exactly the same. Why? Everything, I followed the recipe, but I didn't cook it right. It didn't cook. It's Yeah, it's not like a cooking channel where you can buy meat and barbecue it at a certain temperature for a certain length of time with certain wood and certain seasonings. It's going to come out good. It's not like a cooking channel. No. People think it is, but it isn't. Just, to, you know, I guess if I want to draw a comparison, just pretend when you go uh, to buy the meat for the barbecue and follow the recipe, just pretend you don't know what kind of meat you're getting. It could be elk. Beef, kangaroo, it all looks the same. It could be squirrel. It looks the same, and they'll cut it the same, let's just say. But you don't know what meat you're getting, and you follow the recipe, and you'll go, mine didn't work like yours. Of course it didn't, because it's all variable. Same with rocks. Even though it looks the same, and you test it, the same protein content, same vitamins and all that, unless you get some sort of advanced scientific equipment that can tell the genetics of the meat like if you get some kind of advanced scientific equipment that can tell you the structure of the rock and what it will do when you heat it at certain temperatures you're not going to get the same results no yeah 
it's it, it takes too much science to answer those questions that people want to know when it comes to heat treating. So I just said, no. They didn't have the advantage of science back in the day. Like when they made stone tools. So we don't need the advantage of science these days either. As far as that goes. As far as the testing. Did it, did it nap? No. Let's try another piece in the fire. Did that one nap? Yeah, napped. Got lucky. Cool. Let's try some more. The more we try, the luckier we get, right? Yeah. Science. <laughs> yeah. I had to get that off my chest because some people would think it's really, really interesting to see the differences if I were to do that kind of tests. But it's a very small minority that find that interesting. And yeah, maybe I get 50 comments in the comment section. I am not part of a minority. Look at all the comments that say I'm interested. I'm interested. There's a bunch of interested. Yeah, when, when you look at how many total viewers of the video are compared to the number of people interested, you'll see it's a small percentage. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not worth it unfortunately yep, yep, yep. so does this does this stuff nap nicely it does nap nicely will yours nap nicely it may or may not you need to nap a bunch of it and see which ones work. You order a bunch of this from Jeff, you'll go, I saw it on the Jack Crafty video, but my rock doesn't look exactly like it. It didn't nap like that either. What's up? Don't blame Jeff. Blame the rock. It's variable. It's a natural material that has much variation. This way you gotta nap a bunch. Nap a bunch and then see. Yeah. But I know I'll still get some guys to say, yeah, 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 blah blah blah, meh, meh, meh. Wah wah wah. Just do it. <laughs> I just told you why I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna all of a sudden magically go. Oh yeah, you know what? I, um, I did too much blah 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 and wah 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 wah. Yeah. No. Okay. I'll do it magically. I'll do it now because you said that. <laughs> no. If it naps, it naps. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's it. And that's gonna be my advice to new people too. When I start my beginner series. Just worry if it naps, that's it. If it doesn't, move on to another, something else. Don't try to analyze it. Believe it or not, you can become extremely good at analyzing and it won't help you that much. Because you'll be one of those guys that is like, I know everything, but I still can't do it. <laughs> I know all there is to know about everything, but I still can't nap. Yeah, so you'll be one of those guys. Don't be one of those guys. Because it's miserable. Yeah. If you can't nap, you can't do it, you give it your best shot. Oh, well. Just make bone arrowheads. Yeah. There's no shame in not being, not doing it. And many times knowing everything about the, the stone is not going to help you. Now, it, it, it does help you a lot if you understand what's good material and what's not good material. But you're, 
you need someone to help you with that. I can't do it over the video. I can do heat treat experiments and that kind of stuff with a video, but I can't take your piece of rock and say, okay, your piece of rock is good or bad. You'll need to have someone evaluate that for you that knows what they're doing. And since you're new, you won't know the people that know what they're doing. So you're kind of stuck. That's why a lot of people quit. There's just no, there's no baseline. You're out in limbo for a long time until you finally start to get the hang of it. There's no place where I can, you can firmly anchor your feet. It's so variable. Anyways. Some of you might say, well, you can pretty much count on glass. Glass is consistent. Yeah, glass. Yeah, you can. You are correct. You can uh, be assured the glass is consistent. Funny thing is, when I start people out on glass, what happens? Anybody? Has anyone out there ever started a new guy out on glass? Here, start here. Nap this. It's glass. And they'll say, is this from the bottom of a bottle? Yeah, it's a bottle bottom. Just nap it. He'll nap about 10 bottle bottoms and go and come back and he'll go, is there anything else I can nap? This is too boring. Boring. I need some, some variety. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. Or they, they say, I need a change of color, or I, I just need something. This is too monotonous. Yeah, I know. It's monotonous because you're not depending on it for your life. It's, it's something that you're doing uh, as an interesting skill. And it's got to remain. It's got to remain interesting for you, or you're not going to do it, because you're not depending on it for your dinner. Yeah. Because if you're depending on it for your dinner, you're not going to go. You're not going to waste time worrying about it. You, you're just going to do it because you have to. I got to do it, no matter what. Even if I've napped a thousand of these. Glass arrowheads, I gotta eat. So you just keep doing it. And you eventually get really good at it. And then maybe it starts becoming enjoyable. It starts becoming enjoyable down the road. Even though it's you only doing one thing over and over and over and over. It just it might become easy. And then when it once it becomes relatively easy, it becomes more enjoyable, even if it's just the same old, same old every time. Of course, you're still using it to feed yourself. I think back in the day, you know, you don't you don't have the luxury of doing the activity just for the grins and giggles, so to speak. It's a necessity. Yeah, if the new guys were starting out these days with the necessity of some sort they just had to do it there just isn't any other material as sharp as rocks there just isn't any material that'll get the job done like a sharp rock and yeah you just gotta put up with whatever 
So what if it's monotonous and boring and too consistent and doesn't seem interesting after a while because it's so same old same old. Yeah. All right, so where am I on this? I'm getting to the point where I'm reaching the level, the maximum amount of progress that I can possibly do. I'm starting to not be able to nap it. After it gets too thin, I start getting diminishing returns. Now, could I get it thinner if I was better at it? Yes, I could. If I was better at it, I can get it thinner. Yep. If I wanted to eat tonight, and I de I'm depending on an arrowhead to shoot something, then I wouldn't worry about getting it too thin. I wouldn't stress out about it. As long as it's sharp. What's funny is these days, uh, it, it takes money to eat, right? So if I make this really, really thin, I get more money which indirectly helps me to eat, yeah. So there's a different requirement these days. To get money or to get what you need to eat, yeah. Because I choose to sell these. Now, if I didn't sell them, then it wouldn't matter. Then I would be just doing it for grins and giggles, so to speak. Yeah. See, I nap stuff these days that I don't normally that I don't normally nap. Now, I wouldn't normally nap. Like. Uh, Quartz crystals, I would not normally nap those. I have no interest in napping me, napping anything more than just maybe one. Knife River, I have no interest in napping it specifically because I've got Texas root beer, a lot cheaper, a lot more consistent, it's less cracked. You know, there's a lot of advantages to Texas root beer over Knife River, and it looks this, almost exactly the same. Knife River does seem to get really, really sharp, but there's a lot of agates and uh, Texas stones that get just as sharp. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting sunlight in here. It's peeking in right where I, I'm not, it's not supposed to. Anyway, this is turning into like a rant, a rant video. I'm just complaining the whole time. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this up then. This is not. This is not nice. <laughs> yeah, let's. This is not cooperating. I've got a breeze outside, but it's not. It's not cooperating because, or it's not conducive to the video. Because the sunlight is messing with me. All right, I think I got it. I think I got it. Yeah, I apologize for ranting. The uh, I've been thinking a lot uh, about. When, at, well, actually, at the start of every week, I think a lot about what I'm going to do during the week. And I keep thinking, and I have my notes, and, and, and it says, do heat treat experiments as an option for some of these videos. I, I still have it on my list, and I'm going, every time I do that, I can't do anything else. And then sometimes the heat treating doesn't even work. And I don't want to put up something that 
doesn't work well enough to show on video. Like, there's barely any difference in the nappability of the stone or barely any difference in color. I can't really show much. It's just like the snapping the same thing over and over again with the same material, even though I spent a lot of time heat treating it and preparing it ahead of time. If I get bored with it, I can imagine other people. So I don't do it. Yeah, and that happens with other things too. And I, now I gotta fit my dad back into my schedule because he's back home from the physical rehabilitation. So I'm working around his schedule again. So I've got to be very careful about how I spend my time. Because at any moment, I could need to go back in there. If he decides to, you know, try to walk somewhere where he can't get to, he can't walk there too far away, he starts getting lightheaded. As an example, one thing that could go wrong, and he's fallen down before, and I... I wasn't able to get to him for like 10 or 15 minutes. He's just sitting there or laying there in the middle of the floor. Last time he injured one of his ribs. Yeah. He just laying there on the floor holding his rib. That kind of thing. In a, you know, laying there in an awkward position the whole time. Anyways, what am I doing with this here? I am uh, just picking at the edge, trying to get a good symmetry going here. I'm going to look at it here in a minute. See, i got to get these sides, and there's an original surface still right there. I, I, I want to get these sides taken down so that I can... Uh, thin down the fat spots if there are any fat spots and remove some of that original or the rest of that original surface there and then I can notch it it's got some weird it's got some weird and cool areas that are clear yeah that's kind of cool I didn't think there was going to be any left but yeah turns out even though I lost some of that cool material in the beginning of the video that wasn't it there was still some clear stuff in here Yeah, for those of you just tuned in, uh, my dad's getting kind of old, so. Yeah, he's having a hard time getting around. That's why I'm up here in Vermont. One of the, somebody said, dude, why did you move up to Vermont? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a strange place to move to if you've lived in Texas for almost 30 years. I lived there for almost 30 years. Yeah, well, I... I grew up in New Hampshire, which is just the next state over. I was there till I was like 23 years old or whatever. 20, between 21 and 23, I can't remember now. I think it was maybe 21, yeah, when I left. Anyways, yeah, I'm back up here in the northeast because this is where my dad's house is. My stepmom passed away. He was all by himself. And yeah. All right. I go where I'm needed. Yes. That's what I like to do. All right. So that's good enough. I mean, I could pick at it some more and all that good stuff. But I got to wrap it up. Yeah. So I'll put some notches. 
some basil notches. Not oregano notches, some basil notches. Yeah, we're winding down. I can goof around when we're winding down. When I don't have to worry about thinning or worry about how to answer people that need to see or want to see things about heat treatments. What's it all about? And do some more experiments and tell us and show us and blah, blah, blah. I can't do it. I feel bad, but I can't do it. And I hopefully outline most of the reasons why, if not all the reasons. Yeah. Just can't do it. I tried. I got it set up. I'm going to do regular heat treats for stuff that I sell. But for experimentation, can't do it. If I had time, yeah, I could do it. And if I had the, the interest in it enough that I'm doing it for myself mainly and not having to worry about the number of views I get, then yeah, I would, I would do it. Yeah, I'm not going to risk making these notches really deep. I don't know when to quit on these. I quit on the notches right when people say, yeah, but I need to know how to go further. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I know you can do that. You want to know how to go further because you always break them when you go further. What is that telling you? It's telling you you probably should not go any further. But yeah, you see artifacts that have really deep notches. What about that? A lot of it is luck. Yeah. If you want to go for it, go for it. But you'll find out that a lot of it is luck. That's why you can't do it. You just haven't gotten lucky enough to do it one of these times when you sit down. But if you have a lucky session, and everyone knows what I'm talking about, when they've been napping a while, They'll have these sessions where everything goes right, all the flicks worked out, and it was seriously a nail biter for a while there, but they made it. They finally made it. Yeah, everyone knows, everyone knows about those episodes. And uh, they're usually rare. Same back in the day. If you find an artifact that looks like it's perfect and beautiful and thin and has really long, deep notches that look impossible to make, well, it's probably a good day. Lucky day for the napper. How do you make those really, really deep notches that? Look like it would have broken everything if you just, if you even went half that far. Well, it was a good day. There you go. It's not a mystery. Not really. It might seem like a mystery, but it's not a mystery. It's just a good napping session. All right. So yeah, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead on the notches there. This will be available for sale unless I decide to keep it from my keeper case. And some of you are going to say, well, I thought you didn't have a keeper case. I can start one. You don't know. I could have a sudden change of pace. A sudden change of what I want to do with my stuff. Yeah, I don't want to go any deeper with the notches. This is really fragile. Yeah, 
That's good enough. I wish I had a good background so you can see. But uh, yeah, I had to do this during the day because I don't know, I don't know how much time I'll have tonight. Uh, I dropped it right on the copper. Look at that! Took the tip off. Ah, oh, that really bugs me. And I know better than to keep that copper down there. Dang it. It had a nice little red tip on it, too. What bugs me even more than this is when I drop it photographing it. Yeah. This bugs me when I drop it on a tool. But if I drop it while photographing it, it ruins my whole day. Nothing can fix that day. I just got to wait it out, go to sleep, and wake up the next day and say, I'm glad that day is behind me because that was a bad day. Why? I don't like photography. It's one of the most aggravating. It's like the most aggravating thing I have found to do other than dealing with certain types of people. Yeah. That we won't mention. But yeah, photography is extremely aggravating for me. So to break the point while I'm doing something that I probably should not be doing anyway because it's aggravating. adds to the it multiplies the misery <laughs> yeah this one this isn't too bad because it was an accident but I could have prevented it by just moving the stuff out of the way like I usually do I was too busy whining about heat treat yeah so it bugs me There's some fat spots here I missed. Or, oh, I know why I missed it because the edge is delicate. Yeah, unfortunately, the pretty stuff, the differences in color also have differences in consistencies. I just knocked a bunch of it off because it was a different consistency right there come on so not only does it nap differently uh, because there could be variations in how the heat was applied it naps differently because of the variations in the material itself the, the different uh, colors represent different minerals in the material and napping through those different materials or minerals or whatever affects the napping yeah so yeah all this napping just for that little tip break Yeah, because one little mishap leads to a fix, and then the fix leads to a mishap, which needs, leads to another fix, and then it just on and on and on. I had a couple of mishaps in the uh, in the fixing of the tip. It looked better to me before, but oh well. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to sharpen it as good as it was last time. Or taper it as good as it was last time. Because I've got to be... My brain's got to be fresh. 
and uh, it's tired now both uh, because that tip break is aggravating and also because it's already been almost an hour. I've been napping on this for almost an hour. Yeah. This still doesn't look right. What is it that doesn't look right? No. Okay. There, that's, that's what I was. Yeah, I didn't like that one spot right there. This is where some of that original surface was. It's also like napping in a sauna in here. And yeah, the sun is out, but it's going to go back in any minute now. It's been cloudy all day, and a chance there's still a chance of rain today. So I don't go out where it's cooler in the shade. And you might ask, do you mean there's been a chance to, of rain every day all week, and it's been overcast on and off all week every day? The answer is... Yes, <laughs> it's been that way for weeks. Why don't I want to risk it? Oh, because I've had phone trouble before because of water. I do not want that to happen ever again. So if I don't let it, if I don't let any accidents happen, they won't happen. Yeah. Except when I leave a copper tool down below. There's nothing down below now. All right. So yeah, I redid the tip a little bit. Oops. I redid the tip a little bit, but that's is that's what that's all I'm gonna do. Yeah. And I took down the sides. Just so I can keep that slope going, that concavity all the way. Yeah, that was a bummer. I do like the material. I think I'd rather nap glass though. <laughs> yeah. It's nice material, but yeah, glass would have been a little bit less aggravating because of the differences in the consistency but yeah there you go that's it